Bowie doing here? Drops. Welcome back or welcome home. My name is Desiree. It is so nice to have you here. So I had all of my books in a stack but then they fell and so now I kind of just have a pile. We're just gonna go with it. I had planned on talking about all of these books in order. By the way this is my March reading wrap up. I probably should have started the video with saying that. I had planned on going in a chronological order. We're not gonna do that. I don't feel like reorganizing all of this so I'm just gonna take a book in the pile and talk to you about it. In March I have read 23 books. The majority of these are manga hence why I was able to read so many and a few of them I read on my Kindle so I'm just gonna take a book. Ah, Okay. The Reunion by Kayla Olson. So this was one of my book club books. If you don't know, I have two book clubs on Fable. It is entirely free to join. It's a great app where you can annotate together. I personally love getting the ebook and annotating it with the club. It's one of the it's one of my favorite features on Fable. We read this for my club Rainy Days Call for Romance and that's the one that we voted for and I was pretty happy because it was the book of the month that I'd chosen for my box. And I was very excited for this. I honestly thought it was going to be a four star read. If you can see how little tabs there are, you can probably tell that it did not live up to my expectations. Basically, this book is about Liv and then there's Ransom. These two were like the main characters in a TV series. They were really, really close friends and Liv was in love with him and he was in love with her miscommunication and they did not understand that one loved the other so they kind of separated they stopped being best friends because no one's gonna fall in love with us if they think we're in love with each other then 10 years later the entire crew meet up again for like a uh, what's it called a reunion and so they're back on set and Liv still likes him he still likes her there's some stuff going on and basically they rekindle their flame as they are filming this uh, reunion of the show. <sighs> this had a lot of potential. I read Funny You Should Ask by Elisa Sussman. I read this book last year and I really, really, really liked it. It's obviously not the exact same thing as this, but it's the same vibe of like celebrities and uh, meeting again after like over a decade. So I thought I was gonna like this. I did not. The I rated this two and a half stars and uh, let me tell you why. So my main issue with this book was that it was kind of like if you're trying to do a puzzle, right, and you put the pieces in the wrong place. The writing was kind of scrambled and all over the place. Stuff happened too quickly without any sort of build up or backbone or like any cause for it to happen. There were a few scenes where it felt like, okay, this is building up. It's gonna get better. It's it's gonna it's gonna do its thing. It's it's getting there. I'm actually starting to enjoy this. And then it just crashed. But I do know that in my club there were a lot of people who enjoyed it, which I am so glad that we we chose a book that some people enjoyed. For me, I d I couldn't get past the fact that the writing was not concise enough. The the structure was just not doing it for me as well like the actual format of the book like when they exchange texts a lot in here and for some reason when it's text between Liv and Ransom there's like six different fonts which I don't understand why they would do that it was so confusing they did do this thing between each chapter where there would be like a mini chapter of like what's going on in the media in this story so like there would be these fake tweets of like people saying oh they look so cute together oh no why does it keep freezing because they're they were on a they were doing it live <laughs> and i'm gonna be honest i kind of enjoyed those mini chapters more than the actual story there were m missing elements everywhere and just stuff happened without cause and that's really what just made this book not very enjoyable to me but again, I know some people really enjoyed it as a kind of a quick, easy, sweet rom-com. 
And I can, I can see where they're coming from because if you can look past the actual writing and just focus on what's happening and not have, like, have a need for that backstory or that backbone, then this could easily be a four or even a five stars. But because I'm the kind of reader that not only like analyzes or rates the story, I also pay a lot of attention to the writing and the structure. I don't know if it's the English major in me or what, but I do really pay attention to that and I include it in my ratings. So for me, this book was a two and a half stars. Uh, I had considered rating it three, but I, I genuinely think I'm gonna do two and a half. I considered uh, not finishing it a few times, but the thing is, it, it felt like a never ending roller coaster. Like, I'd be thinking about just stopping reading it wherever I was in the book and then something interesting would be happening and I'd be intrigued and I, I want to keep reading and then just like the structure completely crumbles and then I want to DNF it again and then just throughout the entire book it was like that. So a little bit disappointing but it's okay. Next book. What did my sister send me? Ah, she's having a cup of coffee and she's reading Twisted Love. Oh, I love that. I will talk about some manga now. So, I I read a lot of manga this month. As I said, about half of all the books I read were manga novels. So, one of the first manga series I read was uh, Miss Miyazen Would Love to Get Closer to You. And now, uh, I think... Right now there's only three volumes out, but the fourth volume is not out yet. So I did get all three of them because thankfully the chapters around me had all of them. This is so adorable. I cannot get past it. So the first one I rated four stars. The second one I rated five stars. And then the third one I rated five stars. Basically this story follows Miyazen and Matsubayashi. Matsubayashi, he is labeled as a delinquent because he went to a middle school for delinquents and then Miyazen is like this rich girl who's super nice, super sweet, a little clumsy, you know, that, that typical shoujo manga FMC. When, when they start school, he, he's sitting behind her and both of them want to talk to each other because they kinda, they're kind of crushing on one another and there's a little bit more to just the fact that they're crushing on each other, but I won't say what that is because that would, that would be a spoiler. But basically, they both want to talk to each other, but they're kind of, they're both really nervous. And so you get the inner thoughts of both of them, and it is so cute. I, 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 words cannot describe how adorable this is. It's a little cheesy, but in such a good way. It's, the art style is also very, very nice. I, I personally really like it. I just think it's adorable. And Matsubayashi is just, oh, he's so cute, he's so sweet, he's so smitten, and oh, this, look. Oh, I love it so much. I'm very excited for the fourth volume oh, to hit the shelves because I, I am, I'm obsessed with this series now. Something that has been done before, right, like it, it kind of reminds me of Kimi ni Todoke a little bit, which is one of my absolute favorite. It, it's not identical to Kimi ni Todoke, but it is similar in the way that, like, the, the relationship that these two have is kind of similar. I really recommend this if you're looking for something really cute, really sweet, very easy to read. There's not any intense drama or anything that's, like, that could be overwhelming is just super sweet and easy to read. And then we're gonna keep up with the manga here. I read volume four and five of A Sign of Affection. Yuki is deaf, she starts going to college and she meets this boy who travels a lot and he can speak a lot of different languages and he's, he's very like all over the place. When they meet, he shows a lot of interest in Yuki and he asks her if she can teach him sign language. And so they start this friendship, she starts having a crush on him, and he's he's a kind of very mature character, but also likes to, you know, play around and be just... He can also be a funny character, but he does give off, like, mature man vibes, <laughs> which I, I really, really like. Uh, both of these were five stars, and then I've had them for a very long time, 
and um, so I, I read them like seven years ago and I just had a craving to get back into it so I had the first three volume of Kamisama Kiss which is my utmost like number one comfort anime and I just I love the story so much I love the characters the art the music it's it's funny it's sweet it's so it's such a good enemies to lovers Tomoe is one of my favorite morally great characters he's so protective of Nanami but he denies it it's so good if you're not familiar with it I really really recommend uh, grabbing the mangas but also watching the anime if you finish watching the first two seasons and you think that's how it ends it doesn't there are like three bonus episodes that have not been dubbed they're only uh, in Japanese with subtitles and they are a teeny tiny bit tricky to find but that's the actual end to Tomoe and Nanami's story so uh, when I first finished uh, the anime and I thought that's how it finishes I thought it's impossible that cannot end that way so I started doing some research and I found the bonus episodes these were all five stars if I'm not mistaken something like that so good so sweet Ugh. I am obsessed with them and I, I don't think I'll ever stop being obsessed with them. And then I read volume one of Love and Focus and after I finished this I ran back to the bookstore and I bought the uh, collection. It's only a three volume series and they made like one big book with all three in them. So I went back and got that. This is about a girl, Mako, she's always had a passion for photography and um, she loses her grandfather and so she clings to that this art to, to kind of keep the, the relationship she had with her grandfather. And then her childhood best friend Kay encourages her to come to his high school where they have a really really good photography club. So she goes there and she stays in like the um, dorm where Kay and his classmates live. And so she meets this boy, this guy here. This is Kay. This is Mako, and this is the guy that she meets. And she just becomes obsessed with him with taking his pictures because he is a very photogenic person. So these two become kind of close. He's like the, the very grumpy guy, and then he is the childhood best friend who has feelings for her, and she doesn't know. So I've only read the first one. I have yet to finish the series, but I'm so excited to get through it. I really hope it doesn't finish in a way that will make me sob, but this was five stars. So cute, a little bit of funny in there, and the the protective, the protectiveness of Kay over Mako, you, you see it at the end. Ugh, it's so good. And the art style is very, very nice too. I really like it. It's very, very nice. And then I read volume 5 of Mint Chocolate. started reading this last year and there's a new volume coming out every couple of months. I got the first volume as a gift. I, I'm not the one that chose this, I just decided to keep reading it. It's about Nanami and uh, Kyohei. These two had a crush on each other and then their parents decide to get married. So her mom marries his dad. So now they're step-siblings but they had a crush on each other. They liked each other before their parents got married. So now there's this whole complicated thing about they really, really love each other, but their parents are married. So that's that's kind of how the, the story follows. I don't remember how many stars I rated this one. Uh, four stars. It's really sweet. It is probably not for everyone, but I still I still really enjoy it. I had went to chapters and there was this sale going on on manga and graphic novels where if you I think it was buy two get one free so I bought the first three volumes of A Galaxy Next Door because I thought wow look at this cover the art looks so stunning the I don't know if I want to say this because it's kind of is it a spoiler so basically the guy is a manga artist and he um, his parents passed away a little while ago so he takes care of his little sibling his agent hires an assistant for him to help him finish his panel he gets there and she's absolutely beautiful and she works so quickly and then something happens and he realizes that she is literally out of this world she's from like another galaxy so there's a little bit of magic fantasy mixed in there there's something that really caught me off guard when I read it I just I stayed frozen for a second 
just like what in the world did I just read 3.75 for this one I do have high hopes for it though I have the two other volumes that I have not read yet but I'm excited to keep going with it because I feel like it has potential I like where it's going probably won't be one of my favorites but it's interesting so that's that for manga another book that I read this is a non-fiction book that I read I am doing one of my final projects for university on the ways that forest and nature are depicted in Studio Ghibli films and so I wanted to study up a little bit on Shinto. I This is Shinto the Kami Way by Sokyo Ono. I just bought this because I, I saw it recommended online and then I looked into it and apparently it's not one of the best books to read if you want to learn about Shinto. It does give you like the the base facts on the religion but i'll probably be getting an, another book on shinto just for the sake of like properly educating myself i i've always been a huge fan of japanese religion it's something that my brother kind of passed on to me when i was little i am so incredibly interested in shinto and kamis and uh yokai especially Kamisama Kiss is one of my absolute favorite animes and mangas, so you can expect that I'd be intrigued in this kind of stuff. But I read up on this just so that I could cite it in my uh, project, just for like the, the basic definitions of what is Shinto, what's a kami, what are some of the main elements of Shinto or that indicate you're about to enter a Shinto shrine. So I gave this three stars because like it, it gives you the basic information of the Shinto religion but I know there are probably better books out there but if you're interested like it's a very very quick read so that was like one of the main factors why I got it I think it's like 112 pages but I'm gonna be doing an independent study this summer and I'm gonna need to learn more about Shinto so I'll probably ask one of my professors who actually did some studies on Shinto religion on what books are best to read about this and if you happen to have any recommendations on books about Shinto religion, please let me know because I am most definitely interested. I'll, now I'll talk about the books that I read on my Kindle. I actually have a physical copy here. This is a book that I read in early March. It is The 60-40 Rule by Ellie K. Wilde. I read this on my Kindle, but I loved it so much that I ordered a physical copy and I'm currently in the process of transferring my annotations from my Kindle to the physical book. This book is so good. Oh my god. The reason why I read this is because I found the author on TikTok and she had posted something about how the, the girl in this book thinks that the guy hates her because he never really talks around her. And so they're stuck in a car together to go check something. She She's just like, he's not talking, he must hate me. Well, what did I do for him to hate me? You know, the, that that kind of thought process and then he, he's just there freaking out he wants to ask her what kind of music she likes so he can put it on the radio but he feels like he's gonna be like too creepy or something like that to ask all of these questions because he's actually completely smitten with her it's so good oh it's so good so basically dude holland she is an interior designer and more precisely she's been uh, working on designing restaurants and so she has worked with Theo the the male main character who is a chef and restaurant owner she worked with him in the past and then something happened and it, it led to her thinking that he had reported her but that kind of caused some beef between the two and so now they're forced to work together again and Jude has kind of gotten this contract to work on slightly independently and if she does well then she's gonna get promoted they're stuck to work together and they start off as not necessarily enemies but she doesn't like him because she thinks he doesn't like her and that he almost messed up her career there's that little enemies to lovers tension at the start and then they're forced to work together it's forced proximity so that happens and so they become friends and there's inevitable chemistry and tension between the two and so something happens when they're stranded at a motel because it's raining too hard outside so they can't drive back home and then her room is flooded so she has to stay with him and then something happens there and so they become friends friends with a lot of chemistry and then obviously it turns into lovers 
it it's so sweet but it's also hilarious i love this book so 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 much and when i finished reading it i rated it four and a half stars just because there is a third act breakup because of some miscommunication which i it frustrated me so much because they had such good communication throughout the entire book i figured they were going to work this out they were actually going to talk about it and they didn't until a, a teeny tiny bit later right they work things out eventually it just frustrated me to see like most of the book they have great communication it's a great healthy relationship everything is great and then this little bump in the road happens and they don't talk about it as they had been doing throughout the entire relationship which i just felt like okay did you just drop this in the book to have a third act breakup but otherwise it's absolutely spectacular and there is a second book for jude's best friend and theo Zuchef. so I have it on my Kindle. I have not started reading it yet, but I think I'll probably try reading it in April and then I'll have the two books matching. I will say I'm not a huge fan of the cover, but the look of the tabs make up for it. Now another book that I read on my Kindle was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and it's such a sweet book. It's a small town romance type of thing. There is an age gap. The girl is older than he is. She's about 10 years older I think anyways she's a doctor he lives in a super small town where he's he's the mayor he takes care of most of the stuff like he's he's your typical small town guy she's a doctor with a very strict family they suck they piss the hell out of me but anyways her family name is like this huge deal in the medical world and so she needs to live up to the expectations they accidentally meet when she's on her way back from a funeral and he helps her out they have just right away immediate chemistry they're great they're adorable it's so sweet he is such a sweet man and he is willing to do so much for her and it, it's really really sweet i really liked it, it there's a lot of like self-discovery in it because she's starting she's struggling to just do what she wants for herself because she's trying to please everyone she's trying to maintain the family name by staying where she is and being a doctor and being promoted and her ex-fiance cheated on her but her parents are like oh you can move past it you know like he's he's a really like he has a really good job you should you need to marry him and so they kind of they they still force her to be around this ex-fiance who cheated on her if you can tell i really don't like her dad he really sucks i wanted him out the picture within the first interaction i had with him other than that it's it's so sweet there's a super cute goat that wears pajamas <laughs> it's such a great small town community and everyone has such a great friendship and relationships and this book is part of like a standalone series kind of uh in part of your world there's a mention of a character that was a secondary character in the the happy ever after playlist there is a character a secondary character in this book that is mentioned in part of your world so it's also a secondary character but they're all they're all tied into each other and I really like those books just because you get to continue into like a world that you really liked without having to like stretch on for a bunch of books following just the same characters. That's why I kind of have a hard time with series just because I like to read different stuff. That's why I take breaks in between just to change, change things around a little bit. I rated that book five stars. It's so sweet. It's heartwarming. It made me cry, it made me happy, it made me giggle. It is such a sweet book. I strongly recommend it. I will say you kind of have to be in the right mindset to read it and fully enjoy it because things are like, they start off as friends with benefits and the way that they're falling for each other and still labeling it as that was kind of like, uh, I don't know, like this is not gonna end well. But they are the perfect example of soulmates regardless of what happens. I don't know. I'm gonna leave you with that before I start talking too much and it just gets too confusing. Another book I read. I finally, finally, finally read Daisy Jones and the Six because uh, the TV series came out. I only watched one episode. I'm not a huge TV fan anymore. I would much rather read a book than watch something on TV now. But <laughs> this book, 
I loved it so much. And I know that a lot of people also really don't like this book. And that's totally fine. I honestly did not think I was gonna like it so much, but I rated this... Did I rate this infinity? I did. I rated this infinity stars. I just... This book made me feel so many things, so many emotions, sadness, anger, happiness, being like a feeling of giddiness, just so, so, so many emotions. And when a book manages to make me feel that way, for me it's usually like an instant infinity star because I have a hard time finding books that will evoke so many emotions in me. Uh, not not because I'm dead inside, it's not that, it's just I'm, I guess I'm very picky about books when it comes to my emotions. But I feel like al almost everyone in the bookish community will know what this book is about, but basically it's about a band who comes together. It talks a lot about being in uh, the music industry between the mid-60s until like 1979, so yeah, mid-60s to late 70s. Oh, this book was something. Basically, Daisy is a girl coming of age in LA in the late 60s, so she's sneaking into clubs, she's partying with really big rock stars, so she's she's dreaming of writing her music, of singing, of becoming a rock star. And so her voice is getting noticed, she has all the kinds of need of heedless beauty that makes people do crazy things. So she's starting to get recognized, she's starting up her career, and then there's also The Six, a band led by the brooding Billy Dune. He is our male main character. He, he starts to group with uh, his little brother and some of his friends, and so they're starting to get recognized as well. And now they sign a record deal and they need to add something to sky up the charts and that is Daisy. So they become Daisy Jones and the Six. They become this super amazingly popular band. Daisy and Billy, the tension, the chemistry, the right people wrong time. If I've ever read a book that has depicted right people wrong time, to perfection. I think it has to be this one. So many emotions. Oh my god. It, it was beautiful. It was also, the way it was written, it's written as like an interview. You get like, okay, Eddie said this, and Warren said this, and Graham said that. I absolutely adored this. It was spectacular. And for those of you who can't relate, who did not like it as much, don't ask yourself what's wrong with you. You just didn't like it. And that's all it is. Next, Okay, let's talk about this one. I read Ravel for one of the book clubs that I'm in on Fable. This is not, this was not for my club. It is for the Crow Club, which is run by two fellow Canadian book girlies, uh, Sloan and Kyrie. I don't know if you know who they are. They are so great on TikTok. They often post bookish content together. And uh, that's how I found them. And this is the first book that they chose for their club, Ravel by Lisa Mia Smith. And this book is so spectacular. I rated it infinity stars. It is one of my absolute favorite books of all time, probably coming in second, maybe third, to small favors. What I really like is that the this is the very same like outside as small favors. So if I put these two next together, it's just gonna be perfection. This is apparently very, very similar to Caravel. I have not read it yet. I do have the book. I plan on reading it soon. It's just I haven't really been in the mood to read it yet, but this book has funny carnival-esque vibes. Uh, there's a really good romance. There's mystery. There's crime. There's betrayal. There's a little bit. There's some magic. There's jewels and money and lies and so many great things happening all at once. And it's so, so good. I... Oh, I loved it so much. Apparently, it is inspired by Le Moulin Rouge. I've never watched it, so I can't say how accurate the portrayal is. I know I've read some reviews where people say that it is not like Le Moulin Rouge, probably because I think they said it was like it was lacking a bit more crime elements to it. I can't recall, but I'm not qualified to make the comparison, so. I would recommend to leave that to your own judgment. If you are interested in like carnivals and Le Moulin Rouge 
and lies, betrayal, crimes, murder, odd events happening, time travel, just a bunch of magical elements. This book is so, so good. And look at the cover. You can't tell me you don't want to buy that. And it's one of the miraculously less expensive hardcovers in Canada. If you're Canadian, you know that our hardcovers usually range up to $40, right? This one was $25, which is pretty reasonable because now paperbacks are like between $22 and $25. Like this teeny tiny thing cost me $23 Canadian dollars. This beautiful hardcover was $25. And the author, she's amazing. This is her very first novel. She's so great. Her writing for a, for a first, for a debut novel, was so 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 good i adored it i ate this up this was exactly the kind of book that just consumed my brain 24 7. i could not stop thinking about it i did not want to do anything else but read this book it's so good you have to give it a shot now let's see here i also read another very popular book normal people by sally rooney now i had not expected to like this to like this book as I had not expected to like this book. I can't talk. I had not expected to like this book <laughs> as much as I have. I rated it four stars, but I do think it's one of my favorites. Now, I don't really know how to explain this to you. The, the writing is very peculiar. It's very sad girl-esque. And I think that's why I really, really liked it. It, it portrays human relationships rather well honestly. Basically, Connell and Marianne grew up in the same small town, but the similarities end there. At school, Connell is popular and well-liked, while Marianne is a loner, so she's kind of a... that that's kind of her label. They start a relationship. Uh, Connell's mom is like a... She, she cleans Marianne's house, so Connell has to go there often to pick her up after work, and so that's kind of how their relationship starts. They start having conversations, and they're able to have very deep conversations. And then there's chemistry. They kind of start this very odd relationship, and you follow them through the years from like high school up to college and graduation and all of that. Even after being apart for a while, they still manage to come back together. No matter whether they are already in a relationship, they find their way back to each other. It's just, it, I, don't, I don't know, this book introduced me to the world of contemporary literature. It it introduced me to this world of more intricate writing, and I, I know this is not like, when I say intricate writing, I know this is not the most intricate writing there is out there. I've read classics. <laughs> I've read the Old English. I know this is not exactly that, but it is more intricate than some of the rom-coms that I've read. <laughs> if by what I'm saying you're understanding that I'm putting certain books in different ranks. I'm not whatsoever. I just had never really read a, a contemporary lit book and gotten into it so much that I wanted to keep reading the same genre until I read this. And so I've been exploring this genre a little bit more um, in March and now in April as well. I am very in my dark, sad literary era right now. I just... I'm still enjoying a few rom-coms, right? I'm reading The Love Wager with one of my book clubs, and then we're also going to be reading The Plus One by Maisie Eddings. By the way, oh, I'm going to, I have some very fun news uh, regarding me and Maisie Eddings that I will talk about at the end of this video, so keep watching. This introduced me to a whole new era as a reader, and I'm incredibly grateful for it, and that's why I consider this one of my favorites, even though I didn't rate it five or infinity stars. I rated it four just, I, I took out a star just because there were a few things that kind of didn't cut it for me, but I still consider this one of my favorites. Now, at the very end of the month, I read In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. I came across this book completely randomly, I was just browsing the shelves at Chapters and I saw the pretty cover and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take it. I've always been super interested in space and it was it's also a rather short book so it was easy to get through this book was really really good when when i reached the 75 percent mark in this book i was tempted to rate it like a three and a half three or three and a half star 
And then I kept reading and I just, I could not rate this under four stars. It says that it is a combination of uh, The Martian and Jane Eyre. And I could not agree more. There are so many elements right off the bat, right at the beginning that are directly taken from Jane Eyre. For some reason, I didn't catch on to them until I reached past the 50% mark in this book. I don't know how I didn't catch it. The fact that she stays with her uncle and her aunt, her uncle passes away, she moves away and goes immediately to school because her aunt can't really take care of her anymore. That is all directly taken from Jane Eyre and I don't know how I missed that. It is like a astronaut contemporary retelling of Jane Eyre and it's so good. I personally really, really enjoyed this. There's a little bit of romance in there. That's part of why I rated this four instead of five stars. It does say that there's uh, a love story that happens in here. See, like, um, when James and June forge an ele intellectual bond that becomes an electric attraction, but the intensity of their relationship threatens to destroy everything they've worked so hard to create and any chance of bringing the Inquiry Chrome who home alive. It says that there's an electrifying romance between the two. It was not very well executed. It kind of just happened out of nowhere. I there There was so much potential to build up more on this relationship, but see that I acknowledge that this is considered like fiction, like just fiction literature, and romance is a sub sub genre. So I acknowledge that it was to be expected for the romance to not be as developed as it would be in like a romance book, but I still feel like it could have been developed a little bit better, could have been introduced to us a little bit better and it, it's kind of a teeny tiny bit all over the place like a little bit like why is this happening you know but it does not take away from the main plot which so good basically uh june's uncle was a really 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 smart engineer and he created these uh fuel cells for um, the Inquiry as well as another rocket. When the Inquiry goes into space for its sixth year mission, the connection between Earth and the Inquiry is cut out completely and so they're convinced that they've died. And then June, many years later, when she herself goes to space, she has some data from when she was younger that she had saved that was proof that the Inquiry crew were still alive. And so that's kind of the whole focus around figuring out what's wrong with the fuel cells. That That's why I mentioned that. There's something that went wrong with the fuel cells in the Inquiry. And so that kind of led to the communication being disrupted and them being stuck in space. And so when June gets to space, she starts talking with the, the other members of her crew. They start working toward fixing the, the fuel cell and then it's just, it's filled with so much fun information i used so many clear post-its in here and i did so much research first off learning what a fuel cell is but i learned about that i learned about there's a bunch of technology engineering terms that i'd never heard of before and so i had so many questions that i just looked up on the internet and wrote them on a post-it and stuck them where the, the question was initiated and I just, I really, really recommend this. If you're a fan of Jane Eyre, it's not identical to Jane Eyre, but it is very similar in the upbringing of the female main character. She has a very similar childhood to Jane, so that's very, very good. And the relationship is rather similar, <laughs> more like incredibly similar to the relationship of Jane and Mr. Rochester. I loved it. I'm really, really glad that I found it because I've never seen this on social media before. I have never seen someone on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok talk about this book. So I'm really glad that I did find it while browsing the shelves. You know, I, I found a book the old fashioned way, which I'm very happy about. These next two books were for the Trans Rights Readathon that happened from March uh, 20th to March 27th, where a bunch of bookish creators and just readers in general devoted this entire week to strictly reading books written by trans or non-binary authors. I was able to read Pet and uh, Juniper and Thorn during this week. 
It was a really busy week for me, so I wasn't able to read more than these two, but I'm so, so glad I did because Juniper and Thorn, not one of my favorite. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to really think about this one, but Pet is easily and it's one of my other favorite books ever basically uh this is set in a kind of utopian world they're in a world where there are no more monsters and for them monsters are just bad humans so like politicians and um abusive parents abusive partners just very very bad people they were considered monsters which i mean it makes sense so there's no more monsters or so the children in Lucille are taught. So Jam and her best friend Redemption have grown up with the lesson that the city is safe for everyone. But when Jam meets Pet, a creature who some might call monstrous, but in reality is anything but, she must reconsider what she's been told. So she meets this monster who's not really a monster, who is called to this world to hunt a monster. Like a, a real, well, a real a real bad person called a monster. Pet has emerged from one of her mother's paintings to hunt a true monster, and the shadow of something grim lurks in Redemption's house. So the real monster is in Jam's best friend's house. And so no one has encountered monsters in years, though, and Jam's request to protect her best friend and uncover the truth is met with doubt and disbelief. So the adults are not believing her, they are not sure they want her to go through with this. There are no more monsters, why should they do this? The actual monster, pet is lying so you go through this entire book seeing how this little girl i'm not entirely sure how old she is but she i think she might be 12 or 13 maybe 14 something like that and she is doing everything in her power to save her best friend and he's he's completely oblivious of the monster within his household but this book is beautifully written has such an amazing, amazing metaphor for um, the cruelty of humankind, right? The, the way that humans can truly be monsters, how their behaviors are just absolutely terrible, right? How, how evil the world can be and how children are often cast, cast to the side because they are children they don't know what they're doing. They need to listen to the adults. This is such a great way of showing that children do have a voice that is worth listening and also how even when you think there are no more monsters, no more bad people, no more, you know, all of that, there can still be some hiding within plain sight. Infinity stars for this. It's, it's spectacular. And it, oh, it's so good. I loved it so, so much. It is great. And now I want to read every single book by this author. And the other book that I read for the Trans Rights Readathon was Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. And now I was not expecting this book to be a dark and twisted fairy tale retelling, but it was. And I don't know how I feel about it. I I rated it 3.5, but I think it might be 4, just because I, I like, I think I actually enjoyed the dark and twistedness of it. Like it has cannibalism in here. Just so you're warned. It, it's, it's twisted. Like the, the female main character has such odd thoughts, which gave me like, ooh, the, the gave me shivers a couple times. But it, it is like, it's gruesome. It is disgusting, but like in an interesting way. It is, it, it's twisted, but I kind of liked it. I'm very torn between 3.5 and 4, so I think I might like say 3.8. I was still very, very interested in learning what's happening and seeing what's gonna happen after and all of that, but it's not something that I would read again. But basically, Mar Marlin Chin, I, I, I didn't even know how to pronounce her name, Marlin Chin? And her two sisters live with their wizard father in a city shifting from magic to industry, Oblia's last true witches. She and her sisters are a little more than a tourist attraction as they treat their clients with archaic remedies and beguile them with nostalgic charm. So. Their father has been put under a curse, and uh, he's always hungry, and nothing really uh, ever makes him not hungry anymore. So he starts eating humans. Um, yeah, 
it's twisted. There, <laughs> there's a little love story in here, which I, I really liked that romance element. It did get a little, also a little bit twisted at times. Um, please check the trigger warnings when you're reading this. I will still be reading more by this author because I kind of really lived for the twisted vibe. Not gonna lie, this, this was interesting. It's probably more like books that I will read once and really enjoy my experience but not read again because I would not want to go through it a second time. Does that make sense? That, that's pretty much it. I liked it, but just please check trigger warnings if you want to read this. And then last but not least, I listened to the audiobook of Small Favors by Erin E. Craig. If you're new here, that book is the love of my life. It's my favorite book ever. It's so spectacular. I read it for the first time in April 2022. And um, now I did count this as a March book because I finished listening to the audiobook in March but I technically started listening to it in mid-December, so I still count it as a March book because I finished it in March. But the audiobook was really, really good. The The, the voice actress was really good. She did a very good job at uh, reenacting all of these amazing elements in the book. And it just, I, I still love it. Infinity Stars. I am still praying every single day for Erin to announce that she's releasing a net, like a second book that follows small favors because I want to know what happens so much. Oh, I swear, that book is so, so good. It is spooky. It has a beautiful forbidden romance. It is YA, um, but like more towards new adult than the typical YA. It is so, so good. I, as always, recommend it. So as I've mentioned, I brought up The Plus One by Maisie Eddings earlier. I am going to be interviewing Maisie Eddings at the end of April. If you want to RSVP to the Zoom event, you can. And Maisie will be coming in my book club at the end of April to chat with us on Fable. So if you haven't joined my uh, Tabby's Annotating Book Club yet, there's a link in the description that you can go on there, you can join. We'll be reading the plus one throughout the month of April and Maisie will come on the club on April 22nd and 23rd. And the interview is happening on Zoom on April 25th at 8 p.m. ADT. All the details are down below, don't worry, you can find all of that there. But uh, that will be that for now. I had such an amazing reading month. I hope you also had a good reading month. Whether you read one book or two or 25 or 50, I don't, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed the books that you read this month. Thank you so much for taking some time in your day to watch my content. It really, really does mean a lot. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up just so I know that you liked it and that I know to make more like it. And if you have not joined the Little Raindrops family yet, make sure to subscribe. And that will be it for me. I will see you guys in the next one.